Welcome to the Snow Mirror installation. In this video, we will go through the basic installation and then use the configuration wizard to configure the application. All of the more advanced options and settings will be explained in another video tutorial. This one covers only the basics. After we run the installer, we get to choose from three options – Express or Custom Install or the Upgrade option. Let's choose the simplest one – Express Install. As we can see, the Express option installs Snow Mirror into the program files directory and runs on the local port 1990. After we click Next, Snow Mirror begins the installation. Amongst all, it installs a Windows service, which takes a few seconds to start up. After it starts, a new browser window is opened with the configuration wizard. The first thing we need to input is the license key. We offer a free 30-day trial license on our website. You just need to fill in your name, company, business phone and email, and most importantly, a ServiceNow instance. That is because SnowMirror is bound to a certain SnowMirror instance. You can choose one of the demo instances or use any custom SnowMirror instance. After we submit the form, we get an email with the trial license. We can just copy it into the configuration wizard and click Next. We get to the ServiceNow configuration page. As you may have noticed, the instance hostname is pre-filled with the one used for registration and we only need to put in the ServiceNow credentials. We strongly recommend using an account with admin permissions. Therefore, we use the admin user and put in the password. Using the test connection button is also recommended as it can help you troubleshooting the issues you might have with the connection to ServiceNow. When no errors or warnings pop up, we can continue by clicking Next. Another important step is to configure a local database to use for synchronization. We are going to use a MySQL database in this video. The server is running on this machine, so we use localhost as a server. The database we want to use is named Mirror, and lastly, we just need to fill in the credentials for the database user. We can test the connection again, but indeed, this time we test the database connection. If everything works, we can move on to the next step, which is configuring the SMTP server for notifications. We will skip this step for simplicity, but keep in mind that SnowMirror will not be able to send notifications. After clicking Next, we get to the last step, which is creating a SnowMirror admin user, so we can use it for login later. The page that follows is a summary, so you can review the configuration. If everything is correct, just click Finish. The configuration is then applied and SnowMirror is ready to use. We are automatically moved to the login page, and by using the account we just created, we can log in. And we're finished! SnowMirror is installed and configured. We will guide you through advanced installation and configuration, as well as setting up a synchronization in the next video tutorials. Thank you for watching!